find your passion. It's a common sentiment, especially in our current society. It's kind of like an idea, idealized kind of view. You know, find your passion and you never have to work a day in your life. It's going to be this great thing. It's going to make your life much easier. You're going to earn a lot of money and that sort of thing. And in my experience, this has actually been quite limiting and quite too idealistic and too dreamlike. I've spent a lot of my time kind of in limbo, going between things and just kind of waiting for something that would strike and that would spark passion in me, but nothing really did. And I realized that that was because this big idea of passion was too overwhelming, it was too big, it was too, too much to put on one thing. And that passion isn't as sexy as it kind of seems. It's kind of plain and easy. I thought for a while that either soccer or music were going to be my passions and that I was going to pursue a career in them. But through experience, I kind of realized that these things were kind of difficult to me, although I did enjoy some parts of them. And there were aspects about them that I learned more about myself. Like, for example, with music, I liked expression, creativity, and with soccer, I kind of like taking care of my health and becoming better at things and having the kind of social aspect. But I realized that it was kind of a grind. It was kind of a struggle for me to do these things. And I kind of had this belief that it was just going to be hard and that I just had to get through it. You know, like the American dream, you just have to work hard at your dreams and eventually they'll come true. You just got to stick to it. It'll be there. It'll be there soon. It's coming. It's coming soon. <laughs> And I realized that the things I was naturally inclined to that were my strengths felt too easy and that my ego was getting in the way because I had low self-worth. So I felt like I had to do so much more to compensate for that. And that's the thing about passion is that we all have our natural inclinations, our own strengths and weaknesses that make certain things better or easier for us to do. And I was kind of denying that for myself. I didn't realize that all of this time that I spent studying, trying to find out about philosophy, the meaning for life and that sort of thing was just me studying and exploring the human experience, studying my psyche, studying philosophy, studying things like psychology even. And I didn't think that that could be my passion because it felt too natural and easy. And I would just get drawn into it and sucked into it and just do it. And it felt, it was so easy and natural that it was just didn't occur to me that it could be my passion. And I kind of just overlooked it. And that's the importance of having learning and it, through experience and kind of having these experiences and having something to work on and then reflecting on it and looking, looking at it and kind of looking at yourself and seeing what it brings or what it does to you. And you can only learn from direct experience. You can only reflect from direct experience. It can't be brought up in your mind. It can't be given by someone else external from you. Like when I was doing music and soccer, a lot of these things were tied to things outside of me. Like for example, with soccer, it was kind of something that I got acceptance from others from. Um, my parents kind of, I felt like that was where I got attention from my parents. And so I wanted to kind of make them proud. So that's why I wanted to do soccer. And that's where I got, thought I could get attention from and kind of get fame and feel better about myself. But <laughs> it doesn't really work out like that, I found out. And doing things for others isn't really going to make you very happy. And if you do things for others to make them happy, to make you happy, it's going to be shallow because you're not happy in the process and you're trying too hard to make them happy and you can't control that. So that's something that I learned from that. And it's kind of hard to look on the inside and see, see these things in yourself and change. And that's why I think it's important to have projects that you work on to kind of see and test out these things rather than getting all wind up like, oh, this is gonna be my passion, this is gonna be my career. Just build skills, learn things, explore and see where you're naturally drawn to, where you see progress in more naturally. Like for me, it was with philosophy, like I've talked about, but because I found it easy to be curious and to find, want to search for these answers and try and understand it, I just felt drawn and compelled to do it. And this also kind of ties into acting, which was something that I thought in the back of my head whenever I would think of finding my passion, but I kind of brushed it aside because I thought, oh, you know, I'm kind of already easy. This is, it's kind of already easy and I'm kind of all right at it. 
and there's already too many actors so why would why would I do this anyway and like what sort of impact is that going to have on the world like <laughs> it's kind of very egoical and it's funny because I was putting myself down in that situation even though that was a natural strength that I was good at and that I it kind of got attention for and validation for that I was good at as well but it was something that I felt naturally inclined to do and that I enjoyed as well but with music and soccer the funny thing is that these things are just as hard to get professional at as being an actor so it's kind of ironic like I was putting myself through a harder difficult kind of thing putting myself trying to run through hoops so that, that's a, that's a weird saying but I was just making it harder on myself because mu I was chasing music and soccer and I thought that it had to be difficult I thought it had to be a grind I didn't realize that it could be easy and that was a part of like my low self-worth and low self-esteem kind of taking place and that's the thing you can only learn from the past and I could be wrong now maybe it's not acting maybe it's not philosophy but at the moment it is and that's what I'm kind of studying and I feel I gain progress in it more naturally more easy easily and I think that's a good important kind of point with passion because you have to find things that are kind of your strengths that you're you see progress in more naturally and that are kind of so easy that you kind of just want to brush it off like like I've done and another thing I want to say is that you have to leave the past behind you you have to cut off your ties because it's like carrying extra baggage and as I said with the American dream you know we're kind of told to just hold on to your dreams and try and make it work but I was accumulating so many different dreams so many different things that I wanted to do that I didn't know what direction I wanted to go in that's kind of like pulling me apart because all of these things are kind of con con contradicting each other <laughs> you know like music's like creative and expressive but then soccer's like this health kind of thing and I have to be really masculine to do that and that was kind of tearing me apart like pulling me in two directions and they weren't even directions that I was kind of naturally inclined to go towards so that I was very good at naturally or I found an easy inclination to do them and I realized that I have to cut off these things from my past because they're holding me back now because you can't do everything and if I can just focus on projects and see what I'm actually getting progress and see what actually brings me a bit more fulfillment then that's a better sense of passion and I can't do that if I'm holding on to all these other goals and all these other things that I want to do and it's not just cutting off these goals and these dreams but also like you know the past you have to let go of some of the things you've done in the past like regrets I realized I was holding on to a lot of regret from the past and kind of beating myself up about it even though it was something that happened so long ago like a small minor example of this is with friends you know I would some of them I treated quite badly, some of them I kind of cut off because I don't know, I was an adolescent and kind of immature but not also that but with just kind of forgiving myself for that and realizing that I did do wrong and kind of accepting that and taking responsibility for that but also realizing that if I do see them in the future that I'd like to like apologize to them and at least apologize to them you know and kind of so that I can help get it off my chest but then forgive myself and not feel like I have to go out of my way to apologize to them so I can just let it go rather than having it on my mind or like in the back of my mind that just creeps up all the time while I'm trying to focus on things and move forward and a major one for this a major kind of baggage that I've been carrying around is just regret with girls that I've liked in the past that I've cut off like I talked about in self-sabotage my last video <laughs> I was scared of taking responsibility for these kind of things and I'd cut off and kind of remove it from them but I was still kind of ruminating on them I was still thinking about it all the time still feeling bad about it and I couldn't just let it go and that's what I realized I had to do I have to let it go and just kind of accept that that's what happened that's what I did so I can move forward and the thing with these projects is that for me like with this YouTube and doing this philosophy I could be wrong you know but at the moment I feel naturally inclined to do it it feels natural for me to do it it's kind of hard but I'm seeing progress in it and it feels good for me to do you know like it's fulfilling 
and that's the thing you can only see as time goes on and kind of reflect and see like what things you actually liked and what things you're actually naturally drawn towards and what are your natural strengths because life doesn't actually have to be super hard or as hard as you think it was or as hard as I thought it had to be because I had lower self-worth and it can kind of be fun to kind of learn to understand yourself and experiment and kind of see like oh how do I react in these situations what am I actually naturally inclined to do and it's kind of interesting to see and learn more about yourself and it hurts at times to kind of come to these realizations like yesterday it hit me that I had to let go of all these kind of baggage things that I was carrying on to like all these goals that I wanted to achieve and kind of dreams and you know with girls just letting that go and kind of forgiving myself thank you for watching if you did and I'll see you in the next video